All right, all right, all right. It's a great day in South Florida. My name is Chris Igo. Did I say it's a great day in South Florida? I meant to say it's a gray day here in South Florida, and hopefully the uh, the camera's picking this up. But it's been uh, it's completely overcast. It's uh, it's hazy. It's been uh, it's been rainy and stormy, which is a perfect backdrop for the subject that we're about to discuss right now and it happens to be the most requested topic for me to cover and the question that everyone has is will 2022 bring the collapse of the florida homeowners insurance market now the truth is i don't think so but i do know that there has been an exodus not from residents relocating but from home insurance companies now this would be concerning in any state at any time but it's particularly concerning here in Florida, right at the start of hurricane season, which started on June 1st. Right now it's June 9th, um, so we're in hurricane season. Now, rather than panic, this video will share why the Florida home insurance crisis is happening and exactly what you can do to prepare for the possibility of receiving a cancellation or non-renewal notice on your homeowner's insurance policy. Now, full disclosure, Florida has always been a complex home insurance market, but recent issues are pushing the state's market to the point of collapse. Since 2017, there have been six property and casualty companies that offered homeowners insurance in Florida that were liquidated. And there are three more in the liquidation process in 2022. Now, full disclosure, there are other insurance companies that are voluntarily leaving the state. And there are even more that are choosing to non-renew a tremendous amount of home insurance policies or drastically tighten their policy eligibility requirements. I mean, here's the truth. The Florida property insurance market is in a crisis due to out of control litigation costs and billions in losses from recent natural disasters. And homeowners insurance options in Florida have become more and more limited and consumers are facing dire consequences. So you may be asking yourself, why are insurance companies leaving Florida? Well, first and foremost, Florida has always presented a risky market to home insurance companies due to the high threat of widespread weather-related damage. But the current crisis is caused by a number of factors reaching a boiling point all at the same time. The biggest issue right now in Florida is home insurance fraud, which is driven by fraudulent roofing claims. Recently, the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, stated that although Florida only accounts for 8% of the country's home insurance claims, it's home to 80% of the country's home insurance lawsuits. And many, if not most, of these lawsuits are totally fraudulent. Now, here's how the scam works. Roofers go out there and they canvass neighborhoods and they offer inspections to unsuspecting homeowners. And these contractors inevitably find damage on the roof. And they often promise a free roof to the homeowner, claiming that they can have the home insurance deductible waived. And then the homeowners are pressured to sign an assignment of benefits form, which gives the contractors the right to file an insurance claim on their behalf. From there, a claims adjuster from the insurance company inspects the alleged damage. And the adjuster inevitably either finds no damage or far more minimal damage than the contractor found. And that the claim payout is less than what the contractor demanded. The contractor then brings legal action against the insurance company and demands a claim payout for the contractor's original quote. Now bear in mind, the homeowner signed away the benefits to the policy to the contractor. So the contractor doesn't need the homeowner's permission to do any of this, which then puts the insurance company into a position to make a decision. It can go out there and pay the legal cost to fight the lawsuit or pay the cost to settle out of court. Either way, the insurance company loses money due to the legal action. And these schemes are real and they're happening more and more frequently, which puts more financial pressure onto the insurance companies, especially in a state with high claims costs due to weather-related events. Florida property insurers are projected to post a cumulative underwriting loss of $1.7 billion for 2021 due to these runaway litigation costs. 
and the governor's office reports that for two consecutive years, net underwriting losses have exceeded $1 billion. So it's really no surprise that many companies are going insolvent or leaving the state before they reach that insolvency point. Now, instead of leaving altogether, there are some companies that are tightening their underwriting restrictions to lessen the risk of these scams. And this may be the reason why several companies, including Southern Fidelity, Progressive, and Universal, have chosen to continue operations in Florida. But they've non-renewed tens of thousands of policies. So I spoke to one of my insurance broker friends and he explained the logic behind this type of insurer's perspective. And he went on to say, if there's a scam around roofs, I'm still gonna be open, but I'm only gonna underwrite roofs that are 10 years old or less. I'm not gonna go out there and do any 15 year old roofs. Now, although the old roofs are perfectly sound, the risk of damage increases as the roof gets older, likely increasing the risk of falling victim to a roofing scam. Now, obviously risk will always be a consideration for home insurance companies in Florida. The state's shape and geographic location mean that it could be hit from either side by a hurricane. But the peninsula is so thin, even homes in the interior counties aren't entirely protected. And to add insult to injury, fraudulent claims may be more common after severe storms and storms are expected to be coming. Prediction for 2022 is that there will be more severe hurricanes than usual, with 19 named storms, including nine hurricanes, four of which are predicted to be major. If any of these storms hit Florida, which is fairly likely considering that Florida has been hit by more hurricanes than any other state, it could push the already teetering home insurance market into collapse due to increased home repair expenses, including the potential of fraudulent roof claims. Now, although the risk of hurricane damage complicates things, it isn't what's driving the market to the brink of collapse. I mean, let's face it, there are other risky states that don't have this problem. A high likelihood of damage generally means paying a higher premium to offset the risk, but coverage is usually still available. Oklahoma, for example, has the highest average cost of home insurance in the nation due to the likelihood of tornado damage, but homeowners in the state don't face the same difficulty finding coverage that Floridians do. So you may be asking yourself, can anything be done to curb this crisis? And the answer to that is yes, although the full effects of the measures have yet to be seen. Senate Bill 76 went into effect July 2021 and included several provisions to hopefully curb the fraudulent claims causing insurers so much strain. One of those provisions is aimed at reducing the solicitation tactics that fraudulent contractors often use at the start of the scam. Now, while this legal measure may help solve the problem, there's definitely going to need to be additional action taken to restore the health of the market. Just last month, Florida lawmakers met for a special session, which included the dire warning that it is necessary for the state of Florida to act now and stabilize the insurance market for Florida policyholders before the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Now, if you live in Florida, having a plan could help in you lessen your risk of receiving an insurance non-renewal. And while there's nothing you can do to prevent your insurance company from pulling out of the state, there are definitely some steps that you can take to make your home as insurable as possible. The first one is keep your roof updated and in good shape. Inspect your roof regularly and repair minor damage as it happens. Install wind mitigation features. State law requires Florida home insurance companies to offer discounts for certain wind protection features, such as hurricane strap and other roof bracing measures. These features lessen the risk of severe damage to your house, which makes your property much more attractive to insurers. And separate to that, maintain your property. Maintaining your property will make finding insurance coverage easier. So along with checking your roof, also regularly check the rest of the exterior features of your home for damage and make sure there are no large tree branches or other potential hazards which overhang your home as these could definitely put you at risk of roof damage in a windstorm. And separate to that, there are plenty of ways that you can lessen the impact of home insurance fraud and help keep companies from having to liquidate. You've got the power to stop contractor fraud by being informed and reporting that fraud. Know the signs and stay educated. Be wary of solicitation. 
While soliciting business is not against the law, contractors who canvass neighborhoods after storms, and especially those who offer incentives and rebates for an inspection, may be part of a scam. The truth is, anything that sounds too good to be true is too good to be true. And the idea this isn't hurting anyone is just utter nonsense. If you have a concern about your property, you should contact your insurance company. If you think your home sustained damage after a storm, definitely contact your insurance company. And whatever you do, do not sign an assignment of benefits form. And here's why. By keeping control of your policy, you get to decide if a lawsuit is filed, which vastly cuts down on the fraudulent litigation which exists. Now bear in mind, these forms are often buried within otherwise legitimate looking contracts, but once you've signed, that form is legally binding. So it's really important to read everything that you're asked to sign. And if you're getting pressured, that's not a good sign. Do not let a contractor simply point out a signature section on paperwork or scroll past the details on a tablet screen. Make sure you read the entire document carefully. Keep in mind, some companies offer a discount if you agree to make your policy unassignable. Which brings us to our final topic, which is what should you do if your home insurance has been canceled? If you've received a Florida homeowner's insurance cancellation, you must act quickly. With hurricane season approaching and the insurance market in turmoil, getting another policy could be difficult, but it's totally doable and totally possible. It's important that you work closely with your insurer or your insurance agent to see what options may be available to you. Now, full disclosure, you work with the best of the best in the insurance space. So if you're finding yourself in a scenario where you've got questions or you're concerned that you might not um, have insurance options, please know there are always solutions to every scenario. We've been fortunately blessed to work with some of the best insurers in the industry. So if you've got any questions about that or need help, then please reach out to me directly. You can leave a comment down below or you can shoot me an email and I'll be happy to put you in touch with the best of the best. If you're struggling to find home insurance coverage, just know there are still companies that are available to help you. No home insurance company in Florida is immune to the ripping effects of these raging litigation issues. Now to give you some historical context, back in um, the 90s after Hurricane Andrew, I think there were something close to 50 or 60 insurers in the space. And uh, since then, there's just been mass consolidation. Right now, Citizens Property Insurance uh, Corporation is often one of the only options for homeowners in many areas of the state. And the company has completely blown up due to the other carriers leaving the market. To put that into context, in 2018, the company had close to 400,000 active policies. By March 2022, that's over 800,000. Citizens is writing five to 6,000 new policies per week. And in many parts of the state, Citizens is the only game in town right now. But because Citizens is insuring so many of these high-risk homes that other carriers have turned away from, a major hurricane striking Florida could have devastating effects on the company, the industry, and the state. The bottom line here is that Florida home insurance has always been complex due to the state's high risk for storm damage, but the fraudulent roofing claims has pushed the market to the brink of collapse. And unfortunately, this problem may not just stay in Florida. If other high-risk states like Louisiana and California see an increase in insurance fraud, those markets could begin to degrade too. But not to worry, there is hope as many laws have been passed to help curb these scams. And some of the best carriers are taking a different approach to insuring homes in Florida. But will that solution be enough? That's what's yet to be determined. What I know for certain is that the insurers that we use are the best in the space and absolutely can help solve any problem that you have. So again, if you have any questions as it relates to homeowners insurance here in Florida, please reach out directly. And if you're even thinking of moving to or living in South Florida, you've got to give me a call, text, DM, send a carrier pigeon, a smoke signal by any means necessary because we've got your back when it comes to moving to or living in South Florida. And until next time, 